Okay, now that we have set our preferences in Komodo Edit for the first time, I'm going to show you how you can get started with a new project. Okay, so first off, uh, we have this interface, and if you didn't choose to make that go away when we set our preferences, then you'll see over here on the right you've got new file, new project, options, and you can either choose to start a new project from here, or you can go up to file, and uh, you can say new, and then you could pick something here. I'm going to go ahead and say that I want to start <clears throat> a new project from right here, from my launch page. And it's going to ask you where to save it and how to save it. And So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it on my desktop. You can put it wherever you like to keep your files. And I'm not going to call it my project. I'm going to call it uh, first or something like that. First project. Um, actually, let's call it Let's do this. Let's call it exercise one. And then you can use this later uh, whenever you're doing your exercise files, okay? So I'm not going to hit save yet. I actually want to save it in a specific place. So on my desktop, I'm going to create a new folder. And now the thing is, I could just call it exercise one, but what I want to do is I actually want to create a folder, let's say that or you can create a folder, let's say that's going to store all of your stuff for this class this semester. So I'm going to make a new folder that's uh, just called course, let's call it web class or something like that, web dash class. Okay, I'm going to create that folder. And then inside of web class, I'm going to create another folder, and I'm going to call it exercises. Okay, and in, we're going to have several exercises inside this class. So we're going to have one through six. So I'm going to go ahead and create yet another folder inside of exercises that's called exercise one. And I'm not putting any spaces, no dashes, no underscores, no zeros. Just do it as exercise one. And the reason for this is that later when you go to upload your exercise file or folder to the server, you can just upload the whole thing. And that's fine. Okay, so we're going to hit create. And then now we have exercise one. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click save. So now it understands that that exercise folder, exercise one folder, is my project folder. Okay. So now you see here, what it did was it opened up the left pane. And you see that up in the toolbar, I'm hovering with my mouse, that you see that it also selected that left pane. If you want to make that go away, you can click right here or make it appear then you get your exercise uh, project. And down below it has your list of projects. Sample project is one that just comes with the, uh, the installation, so don't worry about that. Um, and when we create new files and folders inside of it, it's going to show up here on the left side, which is really nice. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create a new file. Okay, there are some different ways that you can do this. Obviously, there's this new file option right here. Okay, if I click on that, it pops up with this. This is actually good. This is what we want. But I'm going to show you some other ways. I'm going to hit cancel real quick. Um, another way that you can do a new file is this little shortcut right here. And this is a little confusing because it says new file using default language. Well, we set our default language in the preferences to be HTML5. But when I do that, it gives me a blank document. Mm, there's a better way to start. Okay. So this is rarely what I pick. I either usually pick new file from this option or I go up to file new and I say new file from template okay if I say new file from template it gives me this uh, new file dialog and this is what I actually want it might start up here for you on all languages or on common <clears throat> what you want to probably do is go down here and choose the web template folder and you're gonna be able to select from a bunch of different types of web files I'm gonna tell you to select HTML5 not XHTML or HTML 4.01 choose HTML5 later this is also where you would go ahead to create a new CSS file when we do that too but right now just create a new HTML5 document and uh, you can go ahead and name it or you could just say open and it'll give it some other name but we can go ahead and name it and let's call this uh, index dot HTML okay um, and uh, I'll explain this name index later, but and it tells me where it's going to save it. All good, and we're just going to say open. 
and see now it's got a page called index and you'll see this other tab here that says start page if you don't want that anymore you can close it it's fine and see the difference now is that instead of where it said new file and it would give me a blank document this now will actually give me uh, the basic bone structure of a regular HTML page um, and we're not going to go through that just yet but uh, I, because I still want to show you some interface things about Komodo, but this is uh, this is probably the cho the choice you want to make is either choosing it f the new file from the start page or going up here to say file and uh, new file from template. And just real quickly, I want to show you something on line one. You see on the left we have line numbers, but on line one we have this. Uh, it's referred to as the doc type, a very simple doc type. If by any chance, I'm going to do something real quickly. You don't have to do this, but I just want to show you. If by any chance you go and you create a new file and you were to accidentally choose HT, XHTML, look at this doc type and all of this craziness up here. Okay, this is a very long and cumbersome doc type. If your page ends up looking like this, then you probably have created the wrong doc type. Okay, now since we created this index page, I want you to notice on that left panel right here where we've got our project, it shows our file right here. I can highlight it now and it, it's a file that actually exists and you can adjust the side, the size of this panel if you want to. You can also make it disappear. Okay. Now uh, the other thing too that I want you to notice is next to these line numbers for the page where it goes 1 through 14, uh, I want you to notice that in between the line numbers and the actual HTML page, there's this uh, this column that has these little minus symbols. And I want to show you, if you click on any of them, let's say like you click on the body, what it does is it will collapse sections. And this is, right now, you might look at this and go, well, why would I need that? That's pretty simple. Well, when you start to get lots and lots of lines of code, it can get confusing. And so being able to collapse sections so that you're not looking at too much of it and you, then you get a plus so you can open it back up again, it's really helpful. It doesn't make it truly disappear. It just collapses it like an accordion so that you can, you know, look at distinct sections. You can close a bunch of other ones so that that way and you can see what you've, what you've got. And the other thing too is that it also shows you if you've nested things improperly. See, when I say nesting, I mean like, for instance, this title, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, set of tags is inside, it's nested inside of this head tag, okay? You don't have to know what those mean right now, but just understand that that's what nesting is. And if I were to collapse head, then title visually disappears, okay? Now, the other thing I want you to look at is over here on the right, this is the mini map I was telling you about, where you can just choose to jump to a specific place in the mini map, Right now it doesn't look very helpful because we have a very short document, but if you have a very long document, it allows you to scroll through the mini map and relocate where you are in the page. It's very helpful. Um, if this gets in your way though and it bothers you, remember I showed you in the preferences where you can go back and you can turn that back off. Now you also have these uh, icons up here and if you're not sure what they mean and you just want to figure out what they mean really quickly, not have to guess. You can also go ahead and you can right click on any of these icons and you could say show button text and then it will actually give you the text that's associated with what that button actually does. Okay so this might be a really useful thing to turn on until you get used to what these buttons do. I'll leave mine on for a few minutes and I want to show you uh, so obviously that's toggle the left panel okay um, and then uh, another thing that you can do too is you can toggle a right panel and let's open that panel up a little bit more off to the right. Okay, And if for some reason yours doesn't want to open, for some reason mine didn't, what I just did was I went up here to full screen and then I was able to move it, no problem, and so then I went back down to get out of full screen. Okay, so uh, there's some really useful things in this right panel where it says samples. If I hit the drop down button, then you'll see that I have something in here called HTML. And I'm going to look inside of HTML and see what kind of samples I have. And it has all of these little things with scissors next to them. Those are referred to as snippets. They're snippets of code that you can use to insert. So 
you know, as a beginning student, I really want you to be typing this stuff, but there are some things that you might not remember, you might not know, and so sometimes you might want to just be able to grab a snippet from something. Well, let's just say, and like I said before, I don't presume that you're supposed to know anything about any of this right now, but let's go over here to the body, and if I put my cursor right at the end of the body and I hit return, notice that it automatically in does indentation. Notice that it will follow indentation whenever I click uh, the return key right after I've come off of uh, another tag. So it knows that I'm trying to nest something inside of that tag. Um, if I just put the cursor somewhere though, it, it's not gonna do anything. It's just gonna try to go right up to the, to the edge of the line. So now anything inside the body uh, I can add. So let's just say that I want to add um, a first heading level one. So if I double click that, where the cursor was, it goes ahead and it puts the code in there. And so I could type inside of these two tags, the beginning tag and the ending tag, I could type this is a heading level one, okay? And this part right here that I'm highlighting, this is the part in between the two tags that would actually show up in the browser, okay? And we'll go over this more later. Right now this is a Komodo demonstration, but notice that it went ahead and put the beginning uh, tag and it put the ending tag in for me so I didn't have to type it. And so let's just see what that actually looks like. I'm going to save that. And now if I want to test it in a browser, <clears throat> there's some different ways that I could do it. I could either go through my operating system and find the file and double click it to open it. Or I can also go up where it says preview and I can just either click the globe or I can click the drop down next to the globe. And those two things are going to have different behaviors. If I click the drop down, I have to select an option here. If I click the globe, what it's going to do is it's going to automatically do whatever default behavior was set up in the preferences. And I pointed out where that was to you, but I didn't actually explain it. We're going to go back to that. So let me just hit the globe. And it's automatically going to ask me something. It's saying, all right, you want to preview this file or do you want to preview something else? But specifically it's saying, do you want to preview in which browser? Okay, because I never set up a default and I told it to ask me, it's going to ask me. So if I want to always have a default browser and always be able to preview the file that I've chosen by just clicking on that globe, I need to say, remember this selection for this, for this file. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, let's open it in Google Chrome, for instance. And I'm going to go ahead and hit preview. And what it does is it automatically opened it in a new Chrome window for me. And it shows me what, what is in that page. That's one option. I'm going to close this. And now let's do something a little bit different. Instead of using this drop down, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to say, let's see what happens if I say in a Komodo tab. Well, what it does is it automatically goes into a split view. And what that's doing is it's showing me down here the saved version of what's up here. So let's go up into my code view and let's let's type something different. I'm going to click down on the next line and notice it didn't indent it because it was after the closing tag that I hit the return key. If I had done it inside of the closing tag it might have indented but okay so now let's just add a paragraph and this is a P tag over here like I said you're not going to know what it is. I'm going to double click it and it adds a paragraph, and I'll say this is paragraph text, okay? And now if I come down here, nothing has changed. Notice up here in my tab, next to where it says index.html, there's a little asterisk. That means that the file is not saved, okay? So I have to actually save the file, which I can either do like this, I can say, save, save all. I'm going to do a key command on my keyboard, which is Command S or Control S on uh, on Windows. Okay, and as soon as I hit save, it refreshed it for me. If for some reason it doesn't refresh it, you can always click this little refresh button right here. It's a little circular blue arrow. Okay, now if you don't like the split view, you know, maybe it makes it so that it it, it takes up too much of the code view or something like that. If you don't like that, you can also change your options. We're going to go ahead and end this 
video demo here and move on to the next one where I'm going to show you how you can customize your preferences and make some different kinds of split views. And then we're also going to move on and talk about some more configuration options.